Hey everyone, Laura K483 here, and welcome to my review video for the game Old Man's Journey by the gaming studio Broken Rules. Now, I heard about this game on Twitter, I saw a few people talking about it, saw the trailer for it, and then when I looked at the actual Twitter account for Broken Rules, saw that they were offering keys to streamers and content creators and anyone who wanted to like test out or review the game for them. And I was like, absolutely done, sign me up. And I got a Steam key for PC. Originally, I was hoping I would have, I'm in the midst of building my first ever gaming PC, and I was hoping to be able to play it on that, but that's taking a bit longer than I wanted to, so I played it, of all things, on my MacBook instead. So this game is playable on app, on Mac or on PC if you buy it on Steam. And then, other than Nintendo Switch, I'm not sure what other, if it's on any other consoles. Uh, I can check later and then leave a little edit in the video, but yeah. So that's what made me try this game. And overall, I had a really, really good, fun, positive experience playing this game. So right away, I was immediately like drawn right into this game because load up the game, game starts. There is no start screen. There is no opening menu. There's like nothing, there's no beginning like platform for you to start out and get the game set going. You're just thrown right into the story. And story starts with this cute cinematic of there's a man with this old little cottage by the sea. He gets a letter. We don't know what's on the letter. Goes inside, puts on a backpack. Gameplay has begun. Old man's journey literally has begun. And there's nothing even resembling a tutorial either. There's nothing like, all right, to move, use these keys. Or like even symbols or anything guiding you on the screen. You're just kind of dropped into this world. And now I've played one game in the past that did something very similar, and I hated it. But that's because it was so unintuitive beyond that point. I very quickly was able just by like exploring around, clicking on things, figure out the control scheme, how this game worked, and what it wanted me to do. If I had to describe this game, I'd say it's like a point and click puzzle game, I guess. That might not be the correct terminology, but that's the best I can do. Um, what is so unique about this game is that how you con you don't control the character, he doesn't move on, you control the landscape around him. And you manipulate it to move him throughout the world. And it's so cool, like, uh, it's hard to explain, so I'll just show you what I mean with clips from the game right now. But it was incredibly, incredibly fast and intuitive to learn, and how quickly I learned, alright, so I can raise and lower, like, land in this game, oh, I can only manipulate platforms I'm not standing on, alright, cool. And it was just really, really intuitive in a fun way. And this was such a unique control scheme, like, I've never seen another game that does something like this. Uh, again, I could be wrong. Some of you might be like, oh, this is like insert game title here. But to me, it just immediately stood out and seemed so unique. There's no tutorial or opening long cinematic per se. I immediately was gripped into the story. I want to know what's on this letter. Why is he leaving? What, why, why isn't he packed more? Why is he just wearing a t-shirt? Is he going far? Guess not. I don't know. Um, you don't know much. You don't know much about him. You don't know where he is. You don't know anything. So you're immediately just driven to explore. And you're like, I just want to progress the game just to find out what the hell's going on. And in a good way. So I very much enjoyed myself playing through the whole time. And the way the story gets slowly like revealed to you as you move throughout the game is really clever. That is something, you know, we've seen in lots of various games before. But this one was just done immaculately. It was great. And it transitions seamlessly between the memories, the story piecing together, and then back to the active gameplay parts. And the main thing that struck me about this game that was like the the biggest plus, the most appealing thing, is the graphics, the art style in it. The whole thing felt like I had been dropped in a children's picture book that I could control. The art is just so beautiful and so beautifully done, and it was very, very fluid and very seamless to control and play with too. And I was playing on a MacBook laptop. I'm not playing on something meant for gaming, so I can only imagine how much smoother and even how much nicer it would be if you're playing on your Nintendo Switch or on your PC or something like that. But the whole game was absolutely beautiful and it was nice too, there was always changing color palettes and the, since the landscape is like the character in itself, the landscape is what you control, then it also becomes like a metaphor, like a character in its own right. Like when the story is getting more intense and darker, then the, the color scheme, the color palette in the art itself is getting darker and more intense and it was just really, really interesting and really beautiful to look at. And I was like, even if I have no idea what's going on, I just want to keep exploring this game just to look at it, right? 
Also another design element that has to be mentioned, the music. I have been using the music for the game as the music in this video. So if you've been liking that, then you're in for a treat. You're gonna like the music in this game. It was very, very like peaceful, but still managed to have emotion in it. And it was, it also had hints to the location. Like once you realize where you are in the story and like where this man lives, then you listen to the music and you go, oh yeah, okay, I can kind of hear that a bit. And like I said, mechanics wise, playability controls, super easy, very intuitive. And I was playing with just like a trackpad on a laptop. So I'm sure if you had a keyboard or like Joy-Con controllers, like any other control scheme for this game, it's probably super, super easy. If I could do it, again, if I can do it on a MacBook, then it's gonna be even better on any other platform that you're playing it on. And overall, the game, like just from my mood playing it, was just super relaxing. And that was really refreshing to me. Like a lot of the games I play and I love are very, like adrenaline filled, high energy. It's games like Uncharted, Last of Us, Horizon Zero Dawn, etc. So games that, because I'm all about the story, but that also like lead you to be the good kind of stressed, I would describe it while playing it. Whereas this time, the whole game, I was like, just having a good time. I was just here to explore this world, find out about this man, and it was just very chill, very calm the whole time, in, but in a really good way. Not in the I'm bored now kind of way, but in a just I'm enjoying this pleasant journey kind of thing. And then some of the puzzles were quite fun too. Like once you learn the basic control scheme, then I was like, oh, this might get a little old though really fast. But then as you get to what are kind of like the in-game, I guess, like levels where you get to a new level of difficulty, the puzzles change a little bit and they add stuff to the manipulating the landscape mechanic and in ways that's really, really cool. And every time I encountered a new puzzle or a new control scheme, it always took me the perfect amount of time. Like it took me a little bit to figure out what the game wanted me to do, what was going on, but not so long that I got frustrated or bored or angry or anything like that. The My biggest critique of this game I have to say is the length because I was like I normally I'll play a few hours of a game before I feel comfortable reviewing it and then if I like it I go back and finish it if not then eh but I finished this game in 96 minutes it was so fast and it felt fast too and but the weird thing about that I say that though and it was so short I don't think it needs to be any longer like the story was developed fleshed out it felt like a good length and it's fine I could feel myself thinking oh I wonder if this is gonna end soon around the time that it did and it was really interesting but then again I got the game for free I was gifted the key by broken rules um, if you paid for the game key you might want a little bit more content who, who knows for you it might go longer maybe maybe I'm just a genius at puzzle solving well no but uh, maybe for you it'll take longer than 96 minutes but even if it did even if it only took you an hour and a half like I did I still think it's absolutely worth it if you're looking for a game that feels like a breath of fresh air, is beautiful to look at, and a game that also just kind of has this childlike whimsy to it, even though you're playing as an old man, it just made me feel, I, it made me feel the way I was when I was a little kid playing games, and when, when, you when you took them less seriously, you were just there to enjoy it and explore and learn along with these characters, and it kind of recaptured all that for me that I've lost a little bit lately when, when it comes to gaming. But yeah, so for just like aesthetic, like graphics design kind of thing in this game, 10 out of 10, hands down. For playability control scheme, give it like 7.5 out of 10 because it was easy to use, really unique, really interesting, different from what I've seen before. The only thing that can make it better was it got a little repetitive towards the end of the game, even with the added puzzles into it. Um, and the sheep were infuriating. You're probably like, sheep? What the, what the hell are you talking about? If you play the game, you know what I mean. That was the mechanic that took me the longest to figure out, those freaking sheep. Anyway, um, for story, I give the game uh, 8.5 out of 10. It's a classic story that's going to resonate with everyone. It's something very, very relatable to, something we're all familiar with. But it doesn't feel like old or like, yeah, I know, we've, I've heard this story a thousand times. Yeah, I've seen this done over and over again. So it's a very relevant story that we're all familiar with, but the way they bring you into it and the way you explore it just made it feel really refreshing. It was really, really touching. I almost cried at the end, not gonna lie. Um, and then for overall score of the game, I will probably also give it an eight out of 10. So the only place it lost marks for me is maybe it could be a little bit longer and maybe, maybe like a little bit of 
like tutorial aspect not a lot because I kind of like that you're just thrown in here and you're like figure it out but in a good way and the way the game just naturally encourages you to figure out what it wants you to do but just around the end, just a little bit just a little bit more of that might have been nice but yeah the game like I said on sale on Steam or you can get it in Nintendo eShop or Nintendo Switch if you're looking for a fun, relaxing game, but a short game, like a one and done kind of, like, oh, I'd love to just go on a journey and experience something new and have a fun time, try a new game, or just look at something beautiful for an hour and a half, because it truly is a one of the most gorgeous games to look at that I've played. Uh, cannot recommend this game highly enough, and I'm definitely looking forward to playing more games by this studio, Broken Rules, in the future. Uh, think that they have a really, really unique, like, the point of view when it comes to gaming and I can't wait to see what other stuff they come up with. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye!